Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. Know thyself, know thy enemy. A thousand battles, a thousand victories. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in the attack. If you know the enemy and know yourself you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. All men can see these tactics whereby I conquer, but what none can see is the strategy out of which victory is evolved. There is no instance of a nation benefiting from prolonged warfare. He who is prudent and lies in wait for an enemy who is not, will be victorious. If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight, even though the ruler forbid it. If fighting will not result in victory, then you must not fight even at the ruler's bidding. To fight and conquer in all our battles is not supreme excellence. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. Pretend inferiority and encourages arrogance. If your opponent is of choleric temper, irritate him. Know your enemy and know yourself and you can fight a hundred battles without disaster. The art of war teaches us to rely not on the likelihood of the enemy's not coming, but on our own readiness to receive him, not on the chance of his not attacking, but rather on the fact that we have made our position unassailable. He who knows when he can fight and when he cannot, will be victorious. The opportunity to secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. Regard your soldiers as your children, and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Look on them as your own beloved sons, and they will stand by you even unto death. A good commander is benevolent and unconcerned with fame. The general who wins the battle makes many calculations in his temple before the battle is fought. The general who loses makes but few calculations beforehand. For to win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. If you are far from the enemy, make him believe you are near. The quality of decision is like the well-timed swoop of a falcon which enables it to strike and destroy its victim. The general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service for his sovereign, is the jewel of the kingdom. Prohibit the taking of omens, and do away with superstitious doubts. Then, until death itself comes, no calamity need be feared. There has never been a protracted war from which a country has benefited. Thus, what is of supreme importance in war is to attack the enemy's strategy. To see victory only when it is within the ken of the common herd is not the acme of excellence. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. Confront them with annihilation, and they will then survive, plunge them into a deadly situation, and they will then live. When people fall into danger, 
they are then able to strive for victory.